This video is to be used for educational purposes only and is not intended to replace individual research or licensed investment advice. Unique experiences and past performance does not guarantee future results. Trading stocks, options, and spot currencies involves substantial risk and there's always the potential for loss. Your trading results may vary. No representations are being made that any software or training will guarantee profits or not result in losses from trading. This is the JDFN Market Wrap. This is the Market Wrap on a Monday. Jack Lott on the James Dix Financial Network. The biggest news today, the House defeated a $700 billion emergency rescue for the nation's financial system, ignoring urgent warnings from the president and congressional leaders of both parties that the economy could nosedive into recession without it. Several Republican aides said House Speaker Nancy Pelosi had torpedoed any spirit of bipartisanship that surrounded the bill with a scathing speech near the close of the debate that blamed Bush's policies for the economic turmoil. Again, the House has defeated a $700 billion emergency rescue for the nation's financial system. In other news today, Citigroup will acquire the banking operations of Wachovia. The FDIC said that Citi will acquire the bulk of Wachovia's assets as well as its liabilities. Citigroup will absorb up to $42 billion of losses on a $312 billion pool of loans. Freddie Mac and Fannie Mae have received a federal grand jury subpoena from the U.S. Attorney's Office seeking documents relating to accounting disclosure and corporate governance matters. Commerce reported U.S. consumer spending was flat in August, the third consecutive week consumption report. Personal incomes increased 0.5%, however, core inflation rose 0.2%. Office Depot entered a new $1.25 billion asset-based credit facility. The facility will be secured by the Office Depot inventory, accounts receivable, cash, and depository accounts. InBev SA shareholders backed the company's $52 billion takeover of Anheuser-Busch, a deal that would form the world's largest brewer. In other business news, Cardinal Health announced it will spin off its clinical and medical products business into one separate publicly traded company. And AT&T and DirecTV are launching a co-branded satellite television service that will be available to consumers beginning after the telecommunications company current deal with DISH expires early next year. Economic reports on Tuesday include the retail chain index, Case-Shiller home prices for July, the Chicago PMI for September, and September's Consumer Confidence Report. Earnings today, Walgreen reports fourth quarter earnings rose $443 million, or 45 cents a share. That's in line with analysts' expectations. CalMain Foods said for the quarter their income fell $11.1 million to 47 cents a share. Circuit City reporting its quarterly loss widened to $239.2 million, or $1.45. And Pilgrim's Pride said it's notified its lenders it expects to report a significant loss for the fiscal fourth quarter. Earnings on Tuesday include Pfizer and Pepsi bottling. Those are the only major marquee names on the calendar. Third quarter earnings season begins next week on October 7th when Alcoa releases its quarterly numbers. Some of the stocks in the news today, American International Group said the New York Stock Exchange granted it an exemption to issue preferred shares to the U.S. Treasury without shareholder approval. Oshkosh expects to report earnings per share for its fiscal fourth quarter at or above the higher end of its range. And McClatchy Company reports its advertising revenue still sluggish, with most of the weakness coming from California and Florida. And that is the market wrap on this Monday. Jack Lott on the James Dix Financial Network.